Okay, welcome back to the uh, Teach Them Diligently com uh, convention that's taking place here in Spartanburg, South Carolina. I just walked in a few moments ago, uh, did an interview a little, uh, few moments ago with Colin Gunn about his material, and I walked into the exhibit hall, and who do I see standing there at their table but Ken Ham, which in the providence of the Lord, I think that uh, you're going to enjoy this interview. One of the reasons is uh, something has taken place here just recently in the Greenville-Spartanburg area. And what's taken place is uh, Blue Ridge Christian Academy, and specifically a teacher there at Blue Ridge, uh, showed a DVD that was uh, purchased through and provided by Answers in Genesis. She then gave a quiz on what they showed, that DVD. The quiz was taken by a parent and posted on what's called Snopes.com. Snopes is kind of a uh, verification website. A group of atheists heard or saw this on Snopes.com and viciously attacked the school. That teacher that gave the uh, test is actually part of my congregation, the congregation that I pastor out in Traveler's Rest. The school has, uh, as I mentioned, has been viciously attacked. But in the providence of God, God's people have actually risen up and started to support this school. And so I wanted to get Ken Ham over here to specifically comment on this issue. Ken has written about it out on his blog, but uh, here we are just days removed from all of this taking place. Ken happens to be right here in the providence of, of the Lord. And so, Ken, welcome back to uh, Greenville, Spartanburg area. Hey, it's great to be here. And thank you for taking time out to talk with us for a few moments. My pleasure. You went by the school, I understand, just I, uh, yesterday, I did. was it? Uh, yes, and in fact, I would have to say, that's probably the most beautiful Christian school setting I've ever seen in my Amen. life. Amen. It's uh, right at the base. Right there. at the base of the Blue Ridge Mountains. Yes. And just the beautiful countryside, the mountains in the back. I, I mean, I just stood there and thought, wow, I don't think I've ever seen a Christian school and such a beautiful surrounding. So, and, and we, we toured through the school, met the teachers. What, what a group of, de uh, of, of dedicated, godly people. And you know what? They stand on the authority of God's Word. They have a heart for reaching kids with the truth of God's Word, reaching kids uh, with the gospel message, and for teaching them a really good high academic standard, but at the same time, uh, the, the truth of Christianity. And I, I was very impressed. In fact, uh, we're going to donate quite a significant library of creation apologetics books to the school. And I'd love to help them in any way I can because we need more Christian education in this nation, not less. We need more. And uh, so I'd encourage people to do what they can to support them, help them. I know they're struggling uh, like other schools sure. are and other Christian institutions, but hey, we, it is so important we raise up generations of kids who will stand on God's Word. And, and you know, when, when the atheists viciously attack them, I, I mean, in a way, I think we're all shocked a little bit. Right. I'm not shocked at what the atheists do. I mean, they attack us all the time. And right. They call me names and <laughs> start up false Facebook pages and all sorts of things. But, you know, th this is uh, not a big school. It, mm. it, it's uh, a small Christian school. Uh, and, you know, they're in South Carolina, and, and yet it's, it's suddenly become a focus of attention even around the world. Right. And I right. think the Lord's doing something special here. Mm. I, I was on a, another radio network, and a live uh, news program across the nation, yes. and the host was saying to me, I think this is really bringing to the attention of Christians something that's been under the surface. Mm. And I said, I totally agree. Because yes. one of the things I've been saying is this, and particularly since the last election, I mean, I said, you know what, mm. I believe uh, because of the President of the United States and his agenda to push gay marriage, uh, went and spoke to Planned Parenthood, yes. the first president to ever do that and pledge his full support. Yes. I believe that this is given in a sense, I, I think to the atheists, they, they've got this idea, they've now got this license to go after anything Christian. Mm -hmm. And it just so happened that this particular test that, that uh, our students, you know, if somebody says millions of years, what do you say? Were you there? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, who should you always trust first, God or the scientists? God, and, and so on. Th they are just livid about that. Now, I've been teaching those sorts of things for years, sure. teach them to thousands of kids, hundreds of thousands of kids across this nation. Other Christian schools are teaching them and homeschoolers. 
But for some reason, God in his sovereignty has allowed for this school, and I think he's got a real purpose in this for the school and, 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 and for the community, but he's got a purpose in it for Christendom in general. Amen. I don't realize, I, I don't know whether, uh, you know, I, I, everybody associated with the school realizes what this is doing and what I've heard from national media, it's making people realize that, look, the atheists, their agenda is not just to control the public schools. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, they're not just content with getting creation Bible prayer out of public schools, nativity scenes out of public places. They're going after Christians and after Christianity. They want to close down Christians in regard to the message they bring to the culture and raising generations who believe the Word of God. And I think what, what has happened is that Christians have been pretty uh, lethargic. Uh, and you know, and there's a lot of apathy, and yes. as, as the issue of public school and throwing creation out, Bible out, prayer out, I think many of them thought, oh well, I guess you know, it's taxpayer funded, so I guess that's okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah, our taxes, by yeah, the way, right. <laughs> who are Christians. And well, maybe they, maybe that's true about getting religion out. There's this false idea about neutrality. Right. There is no neutral position. You're either for Christ or against. You either walk in light or you walk in darkness. You either gather or you scatter. When they threw Creation Bible Prayer uh, out of the public schools, they didn't throw religion out. They threw Christianity out. And what they replace it with? To explain to students you can understand everything without God, which is what? Naturalism, atheism. That's what it is. And we Christians need to wake up to what's happening. All these battles... You know, I think many have sort of been lulled into thinking, well, maybe we shouldn't impose our religion on the culture by having nativity scenes or singing Christmas carols, I guess. But now it's the atheists who are imposing their religion on the culture, their anti-God religion. And, and there's a difference here too that we need to comprehend. And that is Christians who are a new creation, we want, we, if, we, if we really follow the Lord, I believe it's the word. We we want to conform to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, so we 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 might be intolerant of, of the belief of gay marriage, but but we're not going to show that intolerance to the person. Uh, we we want to be gentle and loving and kind at the same time, forthright and bold and unashamed. But you see, for the non-Christian, the heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. They're anti-God. They become intolerant, not just of what Christians believe, but intolerant of Christians themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm seeing. And it, it, it's, it's almost like a vehement hatred uh, we see out there. Look, look what's happened just recently with the military. And uh, it, it looks like that, you know, there's a big battle going on about this right now. I mean, some people sure. in Congress are calling for an investigation of what's really going on. But... Uh, Chaplains that, not being able to share, or, or just sh share their faith. Being able wow, to share you've got faith. that organization headed right. by um, Mickey Weinstein, mm -hmm. I think it is, yeah. who, it, oh, if you've read his article on Huffington Post, mm -hmm. that is the most hate-filled article against Christians I've mm -hmm. ever seen. Him. I, that is incredible. Yes. I mean, that guy, he, he just does not hide his hatred of mm -hmm. Christians and hatred of Christianity and of God. And he's the guy trying to influence the military. We've got to understand what's behind this. And... To me, it's just fascinating that God and His sovereignty chose this little Christian school in that beautiful area of South Carolina, a teacher who has a heart for the Lord, teaching those students because she loves them, yes. loves the Lord, wants to teach them truth. And then God took that and, and allowed a vicious attack by the atheists. But at the same time, you know that scripture, what men meant for evil, God meant for good? Amen. I've seen that happen yes. so many times in our own ministry. Yes. The atheists attacked us at the Creation Museum, and because of that, we lost our first piece of property, mm -hmm. uh, and we wondered what we were going to do, and they influenced the fiscal court in the area, and so on, and turned people against us. And yet, we ended up with a far better property at a prime location, right on the interstate, right in interchange, and we decide to build a far bigger museum, we look back and say, thank you, Lord, for doing that. At the time, we didn't understand what was going on, but God has used it uh, for good. Even when we opened the museum, the, the atheists came out and demonstrated at the front of the museum, and they held up placards attacking me, you know, like, like the curse of ham across the street, and oh, things like, was it, you know, they're always so logical and so scientific, and, right, right. Yeah, you know, and so intellectual about yeah. their attacks. 
Uh, but you know what? But you know what that does? It brings the media out. You know, yes. I, I was thinking we need to hire these guys <laughs> to get more publicity. But I've just seen it in the history of the Ministry of Answers and Genesis, going back to the early days in Australia when I lived there. That so many times we 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 get, we, we receive these attacks and we wonder what's going on and. And we get a little down about them, and yet God turns it around and does something so marvelous we would never have, never have um, known what He was doing. And I, and now we look back and we can see it. I, I think something like that's happening here. I, I think God is using this little school uh, to wake up Christians mm. across the nation. Yes, I, I really do because it really has gotten national attention. It I mean, has. It's, it's been on Fox News in the local exactly. area. Yeah, uh, Fox, I, I, I've done a number of radio interviews on it, uh, and then even uh, next week after we've done this interview, I've got another national uh, broadcast, mm. uh, live broadcast for an hour on this particular topic. Wow, praise the Lord. Here's this little school. They're praying, Lord, what should we do? They're struggling, like you were saying. Right. Uh, what do we do about next year's schooling and so forth? And then somebody takes this. They didn't do this. You right. know, somebody else attacking them. And through that now, they're getting actually receiving correspondence from around the world mm -hmm. of people uh, supporting them and saying, uh, this is tremendous. I wish there was a Christian school like this in our area. Right. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, they meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Uh, I always think of it too about uh, that the Lord a lot of times will use the very instrument that they tried to use. For instance, Goliath was actually slain with his own sword. Right. Haman was hung on his own gallows. Right. So here they, they tried to put this up there as being a, uh, using their own mechanism for trying to bring reproach against this school. God has now turned that. It's actually being used to help this little Christian school to be funded. So that's a wonderful thing. Uh, and, and if I can, I can say, you know, there, there are lots of other issues going on right now, but to, to, to challenge people that they really do need to support yes. uh, this school and, and to enable them to survive. Mm -hmm. uh, because have you heard of the Ramiki case? The, yes, out the, of Germany. Out of Germany. Yes. This homeschool family that came to America, uh, mm -hmm. asked for asylum. Because in Germany, it's illegal to homeschool. Mm -hmm. And there are instances in Europe where actually the government has actually taken kids away from the parents mm -hmm. and said the parents no longer can, can uh, uh, you know, uh, be responsible for those kids, actually mm -hmm. taking them away. Um, the others have been marched, marched off to public school. In mm -hmm. fact, this family, their kids were marched off to public school. Right. So they came to America and asked for asylum and were granted, but, but now, uh, now there's uh, a, a court case over this asylum uh, because the Obama administration is coming against that Siding with uh, the German government. That they're siding with the German government, but the arguments they're using mm. could be used to close down homeschooling in America. Mm. And that's, that's the thing that should be frightening to Christians. Right. And you think about, we still have freedom right now in this mm. nation to have Christian schools mm -hmm. and homeschools. I, I'm sure the Romakis, uh, that family, would be only too thrilled to have a Christian school like the one here in South Carolina. Amen. In, in Germany or mm -hmm. to be able to have the ability, to, uh, freedom to, for other people to send their kids there. Mm -hmm. Other countries aren't allowed to have that sort of thing. Right. We should be doing what we can to, to, to maintain those sorts of schools, not mm -hmm. lose them. Yeah, good point. Um, I was struck by how um, pertinent this is to one of your latest books, or later, you know, it's been out for a little bit of time, but the book about Already, Already Gone. gone and the need for apologetics. You know, right. you're talking about that this is shaking the church to its core. You list on your articles on AIG uh, the, all the attacks that have been coming in one of the sidebars, or have been happening recently. recently. Um, you know, shaking Christians to the core to make them realize they're not gonna be able to sit back and take a neutral position on this. They're gonna have to be able to understand what the issue is and to be able to articulate what we believe as Christians. So your book was spot on on pointing to this is what the need of the day really is. Exactly. And, and, and you know, when we had America's research group go out there and find those two thirds that are walking away from the church mm -hmm. and then to interview them and then to statistically analyze the data and find out why did they leave the church. Mm -hmm. You know, we found out we're losing them at a young age. We need to be getting these kids at a young age because yes. even though they walk away by the time they reach college age, mm -hmm. in their hearts and minds, they've That's been doubting the Bible since they're little kids. Yeah. Right. And, and so it's important to be able to train children mm -hmm. 
right from when they're born. And the other thing we found was that mostly in church homes and uh, Christian homes, people tend to teach them the Bible stories. Mm -hmm. And the word story today means fairy tale. Right. And the Bible is just this collection of stories. Rather than teaching it as a book of history mm -hmm. and then saying, how is that book of history? How is God's word attacked today? Mm -hmm. I need to prepare these kids for today. Exactly. In fact, that's what the teacher Amy was doing right. uh, in that science classroom. She showed them one of our DVDs about dinosaurs because dinosaurs are used more than anything to convince kids of millions of years and evolution. Mm -hmm. She was showing it to them uh, to show that science confirms the Bible and teaching them how to think correctly about this issue, teaching them apologetics concerning dinosaurs. And you know, not a lot of Christian schools actually do that, right. sadly. Some do, right. I think but some not a lot. pastors may have failed that test. I, I, was given to those they would have. I, I, I tell you what, I, from my experience, actually we did more research with America's mm. research group. Mm. We had them go out and research Christian colleges mm. and seminaries, Bible colleges, the professors, and also the presidents and vice presidents, right. the majority would have failed that test. Mm. And that's because we found out that they compromised with evolution of millions of years. Mm. We, we need to be raising up generations of kids who know what they believe, why they believe what they do, and are able to defend the Christian faith. Amen. And if we don't do that, we're going to continue to lose generations in this culture. Mm. I, I think America is well on the way to becoming like England. If you want a picture of where America will be if we keep going in this direction, in England, church attendance down from 60% at the time of the last war to now about 6%. Uh, Penwin Books did a survey and found two-thirds of teenagers say they don't believe in God. I, I mean, that's what's happening. In America, statistics are 4,000 churches a year are closing their doors. Uh, two and a half to three million people leaving the church, many of them saying they're now becoming secularists. Mm -hmm. And you've got thousands of pastors a year that are resigning. Okay. So this, this culture is losing uh, the, the Christian uh, structure that it once had. Mm -hmm. And we see secularism uh, overcoming this nation. Yes. And that's why we have got to stand up as Christians and say, what has happened? We've got to understand the times. Yes. We've got to realize that generations of our kids have been captured by the world. Mm -hmm. And if we want to be a, a, a force in this nation that's going to affect this nation for the Lord, yes. we need to be raising up generations of kids who will believe God's word, who do understand it, who know why they believe what they do, know mm -hmm. what they believe, know how to defend it, mm -hmm. and know how to go out there and teach it and preach it. Uh, yeah, and, and, you know, really, that's what Christian education is all about. You're so right. I wholeheartedly agree. Um, Ken, you should be commended, and the ministry there at AIG, you guys have uh, provided the church with just an abundance of resources to be able to do this job. Here was this uh, Christian school using one of your resources to do this job, and uh, Blue Ridge Christian Academy should not be condemned. They should be commended for what they're doing, and I wholeheartedly agree that they are a, an example to all of us as to what we should be doing. Thank you so much for your ministry, and thank you so much for taking time out to talk with us about this important issue. Hey, thank you. We really Good appreciate it.